Gray, 2007 Mercedes Benz, Colorado Plate. Vehicle continued westbound on I-70 at a high rate of speed. All right, that sounds exciting. People may have been involved in armed robbery. Duke, dispatch broadcast. Uh... Uh, 1080 vehicle, which Colorado was in a pursuit with. They followed it to the state line, and then they had to terminate. So if they do locate the vehicle and it gets in a pursuit, we just want to get this thing shut down as soon as we can. Jared and I will spike it. We'll get these spikes set out. They're just going to extend out to go across the travel lane. They're coming. Here, take these over. Take these over. Number one lane. There it is. There it is. Here it comes. Passing the camp trailer coming to you now. It's that vehicle. They got him spiked. Hey, let's go. Pull him all the way off. Get in, get in, get in. Yeah, we got him. We just got to. Watch if they, once they do come to a stop, we're going to see if they bail out. Vehicle may be abandoned. We got four, four, looks like four males running north. Duke, he's definitely ready to bite someone. Clear that car, clear that car. Duke, come here. Stop, we're going to send the dog! Stay close, you get in front of me, this dog's going to bite you. Hey, stop! We're going to send the dog! <laughs> Platz. Hey! Stop right there! I'm going to send the dog! <laughs> this is your last warning! <laughs> stop right there! We're sending the dog! Let's see your hands! Platz! Duke! Leaks! Leaks! Good boy. Just use that truck for cover, guys. Call them back one by one. Right there is good. Hey, you, you on the end. Turn around and walk back. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Quiet. Hey, hey. Quiet. Platz, Platz. Platz. Just call them back one at a time. We're good now. We're good now. Platz, Platz. Flats, flats, flats. Hey, hey. Hey, yeah. Evans, go ahead and put your gun away. You just worry about cuffs. We got guns on them. <clears throat> good boy, you did good. Yeah, you did good. That was exciting, wasn't it? We can do an evidence search with Duke. If they were involved in an armed robbery, it's possible they held the gun until we spiked them. But I couldn't see any weapons. The small aluminum spikes are, are, are hollow, and you can see where the spikes have punctured the tire, and then the air is allowed to escape through the hollow opening in that spike. And obviously, it was very effective in this situation with all four tires. You know, there's le at least 12 spikes in that one tire alone. No stolen property of any kind? Yeah. OK. There's a lot. I'll call a record for us. At a minimum, they'll probably be looking at fleeing charge here. That's when you want the dog. I mean, you know, eliminating a threat. If they are facing any charge, if they're involved in the theft of the vehicle or um, just had knowledge that the vehicle was stolen, they'll probably just charge them in Colorado. So the reason I stopped you, a couple of reasons. One is your lane travel is I was traveling behind you, and I know it's a bigger vehicle, 
Um, but you're driving on the white line and you've crossed it several times? Oh yeah, I, this is my first time driving a rig. I'm practicing tiny house driving. Okay, and where are you coming from? I'm coming from Las Vegas. Las Vegas, okay. I'm gonna check this out. Would you mind coming to my, back to my vehicle so I can oh, get some information from no, you? Not at all. You okay with that? Do you have family out there or? No. no? Mm -mm. Okay. You don't have anything illegal in the vehicle today, do you? No. No illegal drugs of any kind? No. no. You okay if I run the police dog around the outside of the vehicle? Absolutely. You okay with that? Good boy. Good boy. My uh, police dog's trained to detect the odor of marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. Um, he's actually alerting to this this passenger side of the vehicle and with that open window um, He's actually trying to go into the open window I um, have personal marijuana. Yeah personal yeah. marijuana Okay, is there any large quantities of any no, drugs I in there? Have a couple of giants. In You're not impaired in any way right now. Are you? No, I'm kind of nervous Okay, <laughs> you're not drinking. No, just hot tea. Um, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search the motorhome Okay, okay. Um, if you just have a couple joints and if you're not impaired, we'll do a few tests. If you're not impaired, um, then probably just write you a ticket. Okay? I, you know what? I have to go to the bathroom. Can you come in there with me? So I can go, I mean, literally, I've had diarrhea like four times on this trip. I'm not kidding okay. you right now. Well, I don't, I don't want you to do anything inside no, my been, car. So if, no. you need to, if you need to do what that you need really, to do. I really would appreciate it. Okay. In the bathroom, it's right there. Okay, I'm just making sure there's no weapons in here and then you can do what you need to do, okay? 479 case number is 15. What's a nice RV? Maybe in a minute here if I can't figure it out. This all this luggage belong to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three pounds of marijuana right there. So I'm gonna place you in handcuffs, okay? For the marijuana. Let's go ahead and uh, set your tea down. The reason you are in custody is not because of the personal use of marijuana, but the large quantities of marijuana that's in the storage container, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and go back to the office and see how we can further this investigation. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, mm. 66 pounds. It's kind of eye-opening just to see the amount of drugs that are actually being transported on the, on the interstates. So where are you coming from today, sir? Phoenix. Phoenix. So the reason I stopped you, a couple of reasons, okay? Uh, one, initially, is you're falling too close behind the other vehicle you're behind. And then as I, I turned my lights on to stop you, and then you came into the guardrail area, so then I turned my lights off. But falling behind you, you're all over the road. Uh, I, don't know, I, uh, I don't know really what happened. I got, it, it, it kind of like, well, can I have you come back to my vehicle so I can get some information from you? Sure. Um, can I get a smoke a cigarette out there? Um, let's let's wait till afterwards, okay? okay? So have you ever had a driver's license? No. Never had one. No. Okay. So you're coming up here to see your girlfriend. How long are you gonna be up here? Just a couple hours. A couple home. hours? Then turn around and head back? Yeah, we'll have to go back home on my... <laughs> Why do you have to go back? Why do you have to go back? I live with my fiance, my wife. Okay. I would like to search the vehicle to make sure there's nothing illegal in there. Are you okay with that? I'm okay, no problem. You okay with that? Let me. <clears throat> Here, Jared. He wants to have a s smoke. Oh. 
he's alerting all over. He's hitting a few areas, then moving. Pop up. Like he can't find the source of the odor. Pop up. He says there's heroin in the car, but we're probably not gonna find it. Yeah. He says there's a half a gram, maybe a half a gram of heroin in there. He's saying there's a half a gram of heroin in there, but I'm, I'm guessing there's gonna be more just based on his story. Keep an eye on him. He said he swallowed it when you were pulling him over. Okay. So you're saying you swallowed a half a gram? Yeah. Can you get that to come back up? No. I'd like you to try. I just don't want you to. How much do you how much do you normally use? There's just a little bit. Probably like not even a half a gram a day. The guy's saying he ate some heroin as I was stopping him, so we have medical coming here. He's saying he ate heroin. Awesome. So we just want to clear him. I don't know what gel's gonna do. We find narcotics hidden in spare tires often. So we're just gonna do an echo test. See if we get an echo. Oh yeah. There's no echo. So probably one, two, three, four, five pounds. We just don't know if it's heroin or meth, I'm gonna guess. If you clear him, they'll take him. Okay. Um, so his vitals check out. Yeah. We just finished up this traffic stop. Um, headed, to the, headed to the jail now. This is heroin. Actually has like a cartel identifiers on it. 27 ounces. I'm assuming it came straight from Mexico. Approximately $700,000 street value. Uh, we got one of our troopers on a traffic stop on I-80. It's a, a drug trafficking case. How many occupants? One. Just one? And a dog? And a dog. And a dog. Back here around the curve, he drifted out of his lane into that right lane. First, he said he's going home for the holidays. He says he went to Denver to see family and then Seattle to see family. OK. He said he got there Friday or Saturday. The car was rented Friday out of Indiana. Uh, confronted him on that. Then he said he lied. That's not where he went. He said he went to California. Oh, gosh. And come to find out, he's all in drugs. We got about 50 pounds of marijuana. Every pack is about it's about a pound. We call it a suicide load because it's just suicide because they don't even try to hide it. So they just put it in a trunk like that and just put it in a duffel bag like that. So every pound in California, we're thinking about 1500 a pound to buy it. And then on the street, I'm, I'm thinking they probably double the profits. You're thinking about selling that for about uh, 3000 uh, the pound. So right now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking all this all this marijuana over to evidence. Uh, we're also going to be taking the suspect over to our investigation office, where he's going to be interviewed by some of our detectives. We got animal control coming to pick up the dog, so they're going to take him. And hopefully, he can get somebody to come get the dog, because he's going to be in jail for a while. But we're going to be coming in here to do the interview on the suspect. And we're also going to be booking the evidence in here. Uh, give me your last name. Birthday. Happy birthday. Couple hours ago. Is it okay if I talk to you now and ask you some questions? No, I'm not talking to my friend. Okay. He requested an attorney, so we're not going to be able to talk to him. He even told him happy birthday. He did. Did you hear that? Well, today is his birthday. Who tra drug trafficked drugs on their birthday? I mean, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's working for somebody. Would be my guess, somebody in Indiana who gave him some money to here, go to California and get this, bring it back here, and you know, I'll pay X amount per pound, which is probably what's happening. I don't think he's he's not a big time dealer by any means. He's probably one of the mules. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seize both these phones. Okay. okay. I'm gonna be applying for a search warrant to download these phones 
and gather information off, okay? Questions? Okay. The charges for now are gonna be a third degree felony. It's over a pound, under 100 pounds, so that lies in that. For this, we're talking about five years in, in prison. One of the things that I enjoy doing is looking for people that are transporting large quantities of narcotics. So we're going to stop this vehicle for a uh, speeding and a signal violation. How are you guys doing today? Hello. That's your license, please? Um, I don't have my license. I got my ID. OK, no driver's license. Do you, uh, is this your vehicle? It's a rental. Did you rent it? No, her, her friend did. So why did you have your, fr your friend rent the vehicle? Because we don't have a license. Because you guys have suspended licenses? Yeah. Let me have you turn the car off, and then maybe you step out of the vehicle, all right? You have any weapons on you? No, sir. Can I see your waistband? Sure. Have you turn around? Do you care if I pat you down? What? Just put your hands behind your back. So make sure you don't have any weapons in your pockets, OK? Actually, yeah, it's just coming out here, all the ways here. I had anything one. illegal in this car today? No. Any illegal drugs? No. Any marijuana? No. Any cocaine? No. Any heroin? No. Methamphetamine? No. Large amounts of money? No. No? <laughs> Any guns? No. Burglary tools? Nothing. Do you have anything illegal on you? No. Nothing in your pockets there? Nothing. Now, if I just see your waistband, just make sure you don't have any. OK, you're good. Yeah. I'm going to have you step up there maybe uh, 40 or 50 feet off. <laughs> this is my canine partner, Duke. Good boy. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> good boy, good boy. Good boy, good boy. Yeah. On his own, he goes into the vehicle. That's his uh, uh, an alert to, to narcotic odor. So we're going to go ahead and search it. There's a bag of meth right there. Let's go ahead and, uh, I'm sure there's more, but let's go ahead and just, if you cuff her up, I'll cuff him up. Is that your cigarette butt? Yeah. Pick it up. Put it in your pocket, all right? All right. Yeah. Get face away from me. All right. Spread your legs. Go ahead and put your hands back behind your back for me. All right, just don't move, OK? OK. So the reason you're in cuffs is just because of the, the meth that was in the door? It's not. It's salt. It's salt or something? Yeah. yeah. OK. Well, we'll test it, OK? Mm -hmm. But right now, it looks like yes. meth. Passenger seat, get out of the bag. See, that's where the dog was going, right down there. Probably about a pound of meth right there. That's a good find, Nick. Hey, Steve. I think there's stuff inside this front seat. They've detached that and then cut into the upholstery. Then you can see the vacuum sealed packages. Again, it's hard to see, but they've cut that upholstery and just push the packages up in there. <sighs> it's about nine pounds of mess. We'll go ahead and collect all the receipts, any type of pocket trash that may indicate to our investigators where they're coming from, where they're going. There may be evidence on the phones or in the receipts showing that they've made multiple trips from wherever they're coming from, you know, whether it's out of San Diego or Southern California, LA, 